Yeah, this is a very easy question because there is no existing method to detect uh, vascular inflammation currently. So essentially, the only competing technology right now is, uh, is a PET CT. So there is this technology that you give a radio label, a radio tracer, essentially. It's, it's, it's called sodium fluoride. And that accumulates in areas where there is plaque uh, with a, a biology that we call active uh, microcalcification. And that's a surrogate for inflammation within these plaques. However, this has not been tested against outcomes and it relies on PET imaging, which is extremely expensive. This is not widely available uh, in, in all hospitals. And uh, it's a method that is very, very hard to validate against outcomes. And of course, it's very expensive. So being able to identify those health individuals who have uh, CT scans and they have a report coming back from their doctor saying you have no narrowing in your arteries, you are healthy, go home and live a happy life. And come to this cohort and say, actually, one in 10 of these people are exposed to high risk for a heart attack, despite the fact that there is no visible narrowing, then that's a big thing because then you can uh, treat these people with simple treatments, for example, like statins or aspirin, and prevent disease from developing, simply because inflammation comes before the disease. So if you are able to look into the inflammation, detect it, and treat the patients early enough before the development of disease, then you prevent heart attacks by preventing the disease from developing for the first time. On the other hand, uh, about 15% of the CT scans performed worldwide come back with some uh, sort of disease, some, some, some degree of uh, stenosis in the coronary arteries or narrowings. But we don't know which of these narrowings are inflamed, which, and these are the vulnerable narrowings, the narrowings that uh, are prone to rupture, to break, and cause heart attacks. With this new method, we are able, by analyzing the CT scans that are happening anyway, without adding any extra radiation and without modifying the clinical practice, just by looking into the pictures and bringing to the surface the signals that are already there in the pictures, in the existing pictures, but are suppressed by the image reconstruction algorithms. By bringing the signals to the surface, we can tell which plaques are inflamed and which plaques will rupture to cause a heart attack. And then these are the patients who are candidates for the aggressive, modern and very expensive treatments that uh, have uh, come to the market very recently, but nobody really uses them because the, the cost for treating the patients is non-affordable uh, by any healthcare system. And by being able to target these treatments to a very small percentage of the, of the patients who really need them is the first step towards uh, personalized medicine. So now we are focused on clinical trials. So essentially, um, the first clinical trial um, that uh, is um, uh, starting in a few months aims to test whether this new biomarker is modifiable by common treatments. For example, treatments like statin and aspirin. We know from the CRISP-CT study that um, uh, those patients who start treatment with statin and aspirin they modify the risk identified by this biomarker. So let's say that uh, you have increased uh, fat attenuation index at baseline, and then you start studying treatment after you have the test, the risk that was identified before you start the treatment is lost. So you are no longer exposed to this risk according to the CRISP-CT study. However, the CRISP-CT is not a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial. And now we are focused on designing these kind of studies to show that it's uh, modifiable, that the, the biomarker is modifiable, but also the next step will be to show that the actual risk for heart attack identified by these biomarkers is modifiable.